Thursday's market closes, well, we were mostly lower except for soybeans and old crop corn. Joining us to visit about that is Sean Hackett with Hackett Financial Advisors. And let's talk about the star of the day once again, more new contract highs in the soybean market. Demand has really been the driver here of that market, isn't it? Yeah, we have this, this really unusual situation where the need for bean oil production and the crushing of beans to make bean oil is insatiable. It reminds me of the ethanol bull market in corn back in the 2000s. It's the repeat of that, except for now soybeans taking the charge. And so I think until the market can see big, big U.S. crop that's, that might overburden the market here, uh, this you know, the demand is just going to be there for every dip in this market. And if we get any kind of a weather issue whatsoever, like we think we're going to get here in early July, you know, new contract highs would not be a stretch with old crop supplies as tight as they are. Yeah. And you mentioned domestic demand being so strong, but exports have been uh, catching up and running well ahead of uh, where USDA initially thought we were going to be, right? Yeah, and we're kind of looking at the hog price in China. The prices have been surging. It looks to me like they may need to bring some piglets in, get some herd uh, growth going again there for the hog herd. And that means more bean meal for the piglets there, which means more soybeans they need to purchase and crush. So I think there's a, there's a story there uh, for greater Chinese demand that's going to keep this market also well supported. So do you think there's also a little concern in traders' mind here about the fact that we've got the northern Midwest where we still may not get all those soybeans planted and that's kind of where we ship most of that to China business out the PNW? Undoubtedly, that has not helped. On top of it, it's late, uh, you know, it's late planted. So we're going to be worrying about getting into the fall and maybe having some early frost dates clipping that crop as well. So you know, the market is just uneasy. It needs a big crop. It wants a big crop. And a late planted soybean crop is not what the doctor ordered for something like this right now. Absolutely. So we've been seeing the bull spreads work in the soybean market, but they've also been working in the corn market. And I know we've talked about that demand isn't as good for corn as beans, but still you've got cash basis levels very strong. So what is that, a spot domestic thing around ethanol plants or what's going on there, Sean? I think the, 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 the USDA just got last year's corn crop incorrect. I mean, when we looked at the heat that we had last year, um, we, there's no way that our heat yield model suggested that the yields were as high as the USDA claims. It should have been more in the low 170s. And if you actually work the numbers through, with a yield in the low 170s is suggest a carryout closer to a billion bushels, which is really what the structure of the market is telling you right now. Yeah. So I think the cash basis and the spreads are telling you USDA is not right. At some point in a quarterly grade stocks report, they're going to have to adjust that number downward. And that could be another bullish sign for the market to head higher here if they get that, that signal from the USDA. So that maybe could come at the end of the month, but with the WASDE report on Friday, we're not expecting major adjustments in either corn or soybean inning stocks, are we? I really wouldn't think so. I think they pretty much have made their initial uh, ideas about what they think the baseline is. They're going to stick with that for now. No reason to change. I kind of think they've settled on what they think South America is. So I agree with you, Michelle. I do not see anything majorly market moving on this report. It'd be the July report. We might start to see some things when we get the acreage report at the end of the month and we get the coral grain stocks report at the end of the month. They may make some changes after those two reports come out if they show changes. Yeah. So corn did try to follow soybeans on Thursday, kind of got above some overhead resistance, but kind of stalled there. And, and what was the culprit there, do you think? I just think, you know, we we're talking about a crop in Brazil you know, people are estimating around 108 to 110 million metric tons total corn crop. That's up from 85 million metric tons last year. It means a heck of a whole lot of exportable supplies more available now than there was a year ago. And that is now going to start to compete for our exports. And it's going to be pretty hard to get that export number going with a very, very willing seller out of Brazil right now. So what about weather? Is it a bullish or a bearish factor right now for the corn market? Right now, we need to get this corn crop moving along. It was planted late. It was a lot of cold weather here in late spring, and it needs to mature. It needs to move along, and it needs some heat. So right now, I think the next couple of weeks, the heat's a good thing. We have enough moisture in the ground to keep the crop going. It would be if this heat dome or, or this, this kind of a hotter pattern were to reemerge here in early July with less subsoil moisture, 
that would be a bullish factor. But right now, we actually think it's a good thing. Yeah. So the wheat market uh, did end off of its lows on Thursday, but uh, was lower on the day. Are we starting to see a little early harvest pressure yet? No question. Whatever the crop size is or it isn't, um, there, we have very, very high prices. Farmers will sell off the combine. And that means that for now, there's going to be a steady stream of increased supply, keeping the wheat market in check. Ukraine, you know, is Ukraine. We can look at every story every other day and if they're going to sell or not going to sell. But I think right now it's really a harvest pressure story until we get that overhang off the market. Yeah, that Ukraine situation has been kind of like a soap opera for traders, hasn't it? It reminds me of the trade war a few years back where it was every meeting with the Chinese. We went up, then we went down, we went down, we went up. It, it, it reminds me of that until we finally actually get something material in our hands. And, and right now it's anybody's guess when that might happen. Absolutely. So the cattle market had a nice push on Wednesday with some higher cash trade and we kind of failed a little bit into the close on Thursday. So are we just running up into some more chart resistance or what's going on there? I mean, we've had definitely running in some chart resistance right now, Michelle, and we've had a tremendous bullish reversal from the lows earlier in the week. Definitely a time for this market to back and fill, rest a little bit, absorb this big move and, and kind of see how the cash market reacts to it. Cause you don't get to see feeders up 15, from intraday low to intraday high very often, but that's what's happened this week, so. Yeah, and cash was certainly better than we expected though this week. It has been better than expected. Demand for all the fears over the economy and recession, the numbers, the demand for cattle and beef is still very, very good. We have record cold cow prices in the dairy parlor right now, which is showing good demand for the ground beef part of the market. I don't know, looks to me like maybe the market got a little over, you know, overdid this, weak demand story and is now trying to recalibrate back to the idea that no matter how you cut it, the animal that are out there and available going forward is going to be thinned out considerably. So with what you just said and the fact that we are maybe going to get into those tighter numbers ahead, will we go back and retest those contract highs? I think we not only will we go back and retest those contract highs, but I think as thin as the animals I think are going to get, it's very possible we could be setting up for retesting the 2014 highs was the last time that we went past a herd liquidation cycle and got on the other side of it. I think it's possible so long as the economy doesn't completely cave in, I think there's a good chance we could be looking at a repeat of that kind of performance. Maybe not necessarily, you know, the next couple of months, but I'm thinking out into the first half of 2023. Yeah, a lot of cattle market watchers have been kind of comparing this to 2014 as far as the setup. So we'll see if we get that or not. And hogs feeling again, um, the export picture certainly is weighing on that market, isn't it? Yeah, even though we haven't been willing to grow the herd for years, um, despite good prices, we are adding weights. And if you aren't moving those exports out, you know, we are highly, highly dependent on, you know, moving this pork out of the country. It's not like cattle where pretty much what we produce, we consume. You know, we got to sell it to Mexico. We have to sell it to the Chinese. And right now we're just not getting the demand from these big buyers that we need to sop up these extra waste that we've been putting on these animals right now. Yeah, even though inventory is at, you know, 5% under a year ago, um, the supply demand thing isn't balancing out. And the funds have kind of liquidated or left the market for a while, haven't they? Yeah, I, I think they're kind of tired of the story that they were trading and are looking for something new and they're not getting it. You know, I think they're getting more you know, I think they're getting more excited about the cattle story that, that's been, you know, it's kind of like they've been bullish to hogs, bearish the cattle in that, in that spread trade. It almost seems like they're flip, shipping gears and, and, and shifting gears to going long cattle, short hogs to play that story. I think they're more interested that that's the place they want to be over the next six to 12 months. Yeah, I would agree. We've seen a lot of those cattle hog spreads unwound here the last couple of days. All right, Sean, always appreciate your time. Thanks so much for joining us. Sean Hackett with Hackett Financial Advisors.